The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. In our previous demonstrations in two-beam interferometry, we showed some very good contrast in the fringes of the interference path. In this demonstration, we're going to show how easy it is to ruin the contrast in the fringes. The setup we'll use is, again, the Michelson interferometer. And here it is. Here's the laser. Here's the beam from the laser. And reflect of this mirror here. And then reflect it again by this mirror here into the Michelson interferometer. Here's one arm. Here's the other arm. The output of the interferometer gets reflected off this mirror into this lens onto the screen. So now let's take a close look at the screen and look at the, at the fringes. And as you can see, the contrast between bright and dark is pretty good, which means the dark is pretty dark and the bright is as bright as we can, uh, as we can get it. Now I'm going to ruin the, the contrast between the fringes by simply shaking this, this mirror here. So you can see that the contrast is, is washed out due to the fact that the fringes are, are moving. If I take my hand away, the fringes come back. I can also tap the beam splitter here. And again, looks as if there's no interference at all because I'm shaking one of the mounts. I could also tap the table, and, uh, and again, I can wash the fringes out. So the conclusion here is that if you want to get good contrast between the fringes, make sure that the optical mounts in the interferometer are stable. Because if they shake, then the fringes would shake, and you get very poor contrast, or some, you don't even see any fringes at all. So then be careful how you set up an interferometer so that you can get the best contrast possible.